the class Exploring Medicine in Foreign Cultures or Other Cultures uh, is 10 years old this year. Um, and it includes uh, medical students, nursing students, uh, physician assistant students, and uh, physical therapy students. We have also had some undergrads go on the trip. When we go down there and we take some medicines and things, what we do has to fit in with their, their society. Uh, we have to add value to what they're doing, not take away from what their local curanderos or other health promoters are doing uh, because we're only there for a short time. When we went as a group, um, we, we went as a medical brigade and um, we set up uh, our, our camp in one of the community buildings. Um, so that's kind of where we kept our things and slept for five days or six days. Um, and then we took over the school and uh, set up a clinic. We brought as many supplies as we could muster up um, to take with us down there. Uh, it's about five or six thousand feet where we go. Uh, it's uh, way up in the mountains. There is no electricity. It's a dirt road for I don't know how many miles, but it takes about an hour and a half to get there. They send out the trucks and then fill the trucks with people, and the people pull up in front of the clinic and just pour out to be seen. So have them line up and um, wait, but that can be a pretty sizable group that arrives. The long truck rides or walks that they, they were willing to to do to make it to the clinics um, made you understand that you were filling like a, a very important vital role here. We saw a lot of different types of rashes. Uh, we also saw a lot of uh, a lot of people came in with a cough and we had learned in the exploring medicine class that with the stoves that they use to cook, there's a lot of smoke in the homes, and so they're inhaling all of that, you know? So that class helped us understand why all these people were coming in with a cough. Um, saw a lot of headaches. A lot of symptoms were related to dehydration. I think we made the biggest difference in patient education, and I think that will have a bigger uh, ripple effect because we would teach them on dehydration and um, sun exposure, those type of things, and we'd encourage them to share that with the rest of their family. It looked like we could really you know, be of value to these people. They really had nothing else. Um, and we started collecting money at that time, um, and we have started to build a clinic. Uh, in fact, the walls are up, the roof is on, et cetera, and we're partnering with the Engineers Without Borders um, to do this project. We're also partnering with Rotary, uh, who's been very generous uh, uh, about helping to fund some of the things we need up there. Um, s such as uh, solar electric. There is no electricity in this area uh, and probably will be five to ten years before they ever get electricity. Um, and we'd like to be able to have a computerized record system up there um, which would be unique in Honduras. In fact it would be unique in many places in the United States. However, um, we think this is possible uh, and we certainly hope this will they'll be able to, the uh, engineers will be able to go back next summer and finish this, the inside part uh, of the building, um, and the clinic will be up and established. And when we were there, it was just a little grass plot. Um, it's got a gorgeous view. <laughs> and um, so we actually were walking the paces out and kind of standing, we had four people stand at the corners and measure out where the building would be. Um, it didn't look that big, and then when I see the pictures, it just looks enormous. Um, it's so exciting to think that that's going to be there. It, it was hard, you know, having to work through the, like in the schoolhouse with multiple groups in one room, you know, really providing the privacy that you need to do a physical assessment or to um, deal with some of the, the, the health problems that they had. So I'm really excited for this new clinic. We hope to be using the space in its unfinished state uh, this coming spring. And what will be happening there, uh, and this is something Honduras is doing all over the country, is the, uh, they are building maternal child clinics, basically children up to five and for mothers that are delivering. Um, that is the greatest wastage of human life in the world. 
uh, is mothers at the time of delivery, either they're dying or their child dying, or just before birth, uh, stillborns. Uh, so this is an attempt to stem that. The health care providers are going to be provided by people in Honduras. And I think that's really important to have in a community like this to foster self-reliance and an ability to um, f take care of each other within the community is really important for these people because we can't, we only get to come two weeks out of the year. And, um, you know, there's very limited resources when we're able to come. And so it's a huge deal to have this clinic down there where they can get regular health care. The people are very gracious. Uh, this, I don't know if you can see behind me, uh, but that was one of the things that was made by one of the communities that we visited thanking us for coming and we're welcomed with open arms every year. It's great to go back and see the same people. One of the benefits of having a medical record obviously is we could then each year follow up on who we'd seen before. One thing that I'll never forget in the ceremony, the thank you ceremony at the end of our trip, one of the women said, you know, our country has forgotten us, but you haven't. And so this clinic to me says that they're not being forgotten anymore.